Hey everybody, it's your girl Sincerely Dre, and I'm back today with another video. So, as y'all can see from the sign down below, today I'll be telling you guys everything that you need to know about UGA housing. I'm going to tell y'all basically the types of housing today, just a general overview. UGA can be very confusing with housing, just knowing where to live, what different types of living is everywhere. So we're just going to jump right into it. First thing that y'all need to know about UGA housing is that we separate our housing by communities. On campus, we have six residential communities. The first community that you guys need to know about is Hill Community. This community is located nearest to our Bolton Dining Commons, where usually a lot of people go if you're like a visitor on campus. So it's also near Tate, and we call it Hill Community because it literally is on a hill. So just to just so you know spatially where you're at. In this community, there are seven different halls. These halls include Boggs Hall, Church Hall, Hill Hall, Lipscomb Hall, Bell Hall, Morris Hall, and Oglethorpe House, also known as Oak House. So now I'm gonna break down into each hall and what each hall offers for students on campus. So let's start off with Box Hall. Box Hall is four floors. There's no elevator in this hall, so just make sure you know that for housing. I believe in these halls for housing, they do put ramps on the stairwell so that you can like move all your stuff up and down, but that is a big thing to know when you're moving in. And just if you have any family who needs wheelchair accessibility, it's going to be very hard in these buildings because there's no elevator. Unless you live on the first floor, then of course you should be fine. And this is a co-ed hall, and the beds that you will have in this hall are going to be twin size beds. They may be twin extra long as well, but there isn't that big of a difference. And each room will have two people in the room, and there will be a sink inside of your room, which is a really big thing because a lot of other places don't have sinks, but you will have a sink inside of your room if you want to like brush your teeth, brush your face wash your hands, anything like that. But you will also have community style bathrooms. So your bathroom won't be in your room, you'll be sharing a bathroom with the other people on the hall. And this hall is also only for first years. The next one is church hall. Church hall basically provides the same exact stuff. Four floors, no elevator, co-ed, twin, bedding, two people, a sink, and community bathrooms. <laughs> Hill Hall is the same exact thing. Four floors, no elevator, co-ed, twin beds, two people, a sink, community bathroom. But the only thing is that Hill Hall is only girl, so it's a female only dorm. Lipscomb Hall is literally the same exact thing, but that is a co-ed dorm as well. The same as with Boggs and Church Hall. Lipscomb is the exact same, but it's co-ed. And if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking down at my notes. And then Mel Hall is the exact same, so same rundown list. Morris Hall is also the exact same. And just to go back over all of these, Box, Church, Hill, Lipscomb, Mel, and Morris have four floors, no elevator, they're co-ed, twin beds, two people in a room, a sink, and community bathrooms. And they are all first year only, besides the RAs, of course. The only difference is that Hill Hall is only for girls. Now, on to the last one in Hill community that will be O House, Oglethorpe House. Oglethorpe House is next to a dining commons that's called Oglethorpe Dining Commons or O House. Oglethorpe House is a high rise. A high rise just means that there are more levels to it than the other one. So Oglethorpe House or O House has nine floors. There is an elevator. It's cold and your beds will be twin size beds. There will be two people in the room. You will have a sink and you will also have a private bed. So that's kind of the plus to living in O House. Although you do have a roommate inside the same room as you, you have a private bed. So, and O House is also not for one year students. It's for everybody on campus. So you can have first years through fourth years, fifth year, whatever in O House. Now that's everything that you guys need to know about Hill Community. On to the next one, let's talk about Myers Community. Myers Community has four halls in it. You have Mary Linden, Myers, Rutherford, and Sewell Hall. I think I'm saying that right, Sewell Hall. 
So Myers community is basically in what I like to call Central Campus, but it's not what they call Central Campus. It's next to Stegman Coliseum and Snelling Dining Commons, and it's also near most of the science classes as well. So Mary London has three floors. There is an elevator, it is co-ed. You will have twin beds, two people will be living in the room. You will have a community bath, so everybody will be sharing the same bathroom. And this hall also houses the French and Spanish language communities. So most people be most of people who live in there will be speaking French and Spanish. I'm not sure if it's just for people who are that's their native tongue or if it's for people who are learning as well, but they encourage talking with other people in those other languages if that's something that you're interested in. Then Myers Hall has four floors. There's an elevator, it's co-ed. You will have twin beds, there'll be two people in the room. It will it's also a community bath the same exact way. But Myers Hall houses our honors community. You do not have to be honors to live there, but most of the people living there, it's open to honors students. Then you will have Rutherford Hall. It's basically the same exact thing as Myers. The only difference is that you will have an interim sink and a private bath. That's kind of the plus to living in Rutherford Hall. And Rutherford Hall houses the Franklin Residential College. So you can look that up online if that's something that you're interested in. Those people are housed there as well. And Maryland and Myers and Rutherford all come together. And in the middle, there will be Myers Quad, which a lot of people like to study at, play Frisbee, any sort of things like that. So you see a lot of people out there during the day. Then on the other side of the street will be Sewell Hall. Sewell Hall has three floors. There's no elevator. It's an all-female dorm. Um, you will be living in either doubles or singles. You can be with someone or by yourself with a private bath or a shared bath. So it's a little bit more flexibility with living there, but it is an all-female dorm. But it basically follows the same thing as everything else in Myers. Now on to East Campus Village. You see a lot more athletes over here because we are near the intramural field. We are near the rec center. We are near their training facilities. So this side of campus is a little bit more different. Over here on this side, you also have Snelling Dining Commons that's close thing to us, as well as intramural fields, as I said before. And we are also near the fine arts buildings and all of that. East Campus Village has five different halls and you can also call it ECB, that's what a lot of us call it. So the main halls, there are four main halls that all come together to create the ECB pod. You will have Busby, McWhorter, Rooker, and Vandenberg. All of these basically follow the same floor plan. There's just some buildings that have maybe one more floor than others, but they're all basically the same. You'll be in kind of apartment style living, you don't have a stove or an oven or like a dishwasher, but everything else is basically kind of apartment style living. And over here, you do have the elevator, it's co-ed. You can have twin beds. The twin beds would be mainly for freshmen who have two beds in one room, or you would have a full bed, or you would have a full bed. Freshmen can also have full beds, but it just depends on what housing you decide to get. If you're in an expanded room, then you would have two twin beds in one room compared to just being in a regular room where you just have a full bed in that whole room to yourself. And you can have a private bath as well. So my room, I have a private bath. If you're in a room with two people, you may have a private bath. And there are some other rooms that are set up to where there are four people in the room and two baths, so the baths are outside the room, but it's still your private bath. You're just sharing it with your roommates. So that is that. And all of these buildings are open to all four years. And it stays open during the spring and winter breaks, which I did want to know for anybody who does need to stay over the spring and winter breaks, these do stay open. Then we have building 1516, which is still in the same area, but it's kind of behind McWhorter and Vandiver. It's kind of on the back, closest to the highway, if like you're driving past. And building 1516, it has five floors. It has an elevator. It's cold and there are two people in the room with twin size beds. You do have a private bath, and there is an in-room sink. The difference from building 1516 compared to everything else is building 1516 is more hotel style. So in a normal year, you will have maintenance staff that usually comes in to clean your bathrooms for you, I think once a week, which is pretty cool. So it's kind of like a hotel living. It basically really looks like a hotel. The only difference is that there are stairs on the outside. It looks really cool. But that's what building 1516 is. Just think 
of it as being hotel type style. Then the next three buildings I'm going to name, they're not a part of any community, but this is basically where many freshmen stay on campus. These are our popular high rises that everybody loves to be in, which is Brumby Hall, Creswell Hall, and Russell Hall. These are all high rises. So Brumby Hall has nine floors. There's an elevator. It's called A. You will have twin beds. There will be two people in a room. You're going to have community baths. And like I said before, it's only for first year. So everybody in there is going to be first year. Then Creswell Hall is also the same. It has nine floors, elevator, all of that, co-ed, twin bed, two people in a room, community bath, and it's only for first years. Creswell also has a living learning community for people who are interested in entrepreneurship, whether you have done it or haven't done it or just want to learn more about it. It's called Launchpad. If you want to know more information about that, just comment down below. I was a part of that community last year as a freshman it was pretty cool so if you want to know more information about getting into the entrepreneurship sort of field on campus just let me know and I'll plug you in with the right folks and then the last one is Russell Hall which is actually in between Brumby and Creswell and Russell Hall has 10 floors it's the same exact thing there will be an elevator it's co-ed you'll be in twin size beds there are two people in a room and it's community style bath as well and first year only. And the difference with Russell Hall is that Russell Hall houses our freshman college experience, which is basically when you're able to come before school and take classes in the summer before school starts just to get a little bit more comfortable and used to campus. Now onto our next community. This is Reed Community. Reed Community is located nearest to Stegman Coliseum and next to our psychology and journalism departments as well as the main part of campus which is the Tate Center and the MLC Center. So you're basically kind of within everything but still kind of away from everything. So Reed Community, stays, Reed Community also stays open for the spring and the winter breaks if you wanted to know as well. So that's a pretty cool thing as well if you want to stay for the winter and spring breaks if you need to stay. These are some buildings that you might want to look into getting. There are two buildings here. We have Payne Hall and Reed Hall. Payne Hall has three floors. There are no elevators in this building. It's co-ed. You have twin beds. There are two people in a room and it's community style bathroom. So everybody on the hall is sharing the same bathroom. Then Reed Hall is kind of the same exact thing. You will have three floors but there are elevators in Reed Hall. It's co-ed. There's two people in a room. You will have a sink in your room and you'll have a private bath as well. So that's also a pretty cool thing with Reed Hall. It's kind of just small differences, but not too big in there. Payne Hall and Reed Hall are right next to each other as well. Then now we're kind of moving a little bit off campus with these next two communities that I'm gonna tell you all about. Uni University Village is still close to campus. It's closest to the East Campus Village. You can walk over there. It's maybe like 10 or 15 minutes from East Campus Village, but if you're driving or on a bus, it's literally like one minute or two minutes down the road. University Village is nearest to the intramural field, and that's basically it, because it's kind of like in its own little area. University Village is more of apartment style living, like legitimate apartment style living. Let's call it motel, but it's not motel in the way that there are stairs on the outside of the building and then it's apartment style on the inside. So in these buildings, you will have a stove, an oven, a refrigerator, and a dishwasher, as well as rooms and private bathrooms. Some of these rooms come furnished, some of them don't. I'm gonna get into that soon. So there are three different areas in University Village. You will have Brandon Oaks, Rogers Road, and just University Village. Brandon Oaks, unfortunately, is not for um, undergraduates. Brandon Oaks is an unfurnished area, so you have to come with your own furniture. But this is for our graduate students only. So freshmen, first year through fourth year won't be in Brand Oaks at all. And they also pay monthly. So you won't pay for the full year as all the other buildings that I said before. These ones you only pay monthly to stay there. Rogers Road is the same exact way. It's apartment style, but first through fourth years can stay there. But you also do pay monthly. 
and then University Village is basically the same exact thing, but first and fourth years can stay there. It does come furnished. Rogers Road does come furnished as well. And um, you pay monthly, I believe. Unless you're in an expanded room, then you would pay for the full year. And expanded rooms are only for freshmen. So you have two twin beds and you'll pay for the whole year. But everyone else who's in their own room with both sides bed will be paying monthly. It still comes out to be like the same amount, but it's just a different form of payment just to get you more into adulting. And these, like I said, are more off campus, so your mail will come straight to your door and the buildings are a little bit different. So your building won't be Brandon Oaks, or your building won't be Rogers Road, or your building won't be University Village. Your building will be building a letter, so building K, L, M, N, O, P, whatever, in that residential area. But all of these areas, Brandon Oaks, Rogers Road, and University Village are right next to each other. Now, for the last community that we have, this is the community that's kind of the farthest off campus for the main UGA campus. This is as if you were to go into downtown Athens and then kind of go further down. It's past the hospital. That's the main thing that I know. <laughs> and this is called our Health Sciences Campus. This is where you will see a lot more of our med graduate students, but you can see other years over there as well. So there are three basically there are three areas over there in the health sciences and all these areas stay open for winter and spring break as well if that's something that you are interested in looking into. We have Brown Hall, we have Penny Road, and we have McGowan Road. So Brown Hall is open to first through fourth years. There are three floors, it, there is an elevator, it's co-ed, you have twin beds, there are two people in a room. This is suite style and you have a private bath. So with suite style, it's basically kind of like Jack and Jill. So you will have one room with two people in it. You will have an area connecting you, which will have your sink, your shower, your bathroom. And then on the other side of that bathroom, you will have another room with two people living in it. So you'll have suite mates in this area. And then you have Kenny Road and McGowan Road, which are basically kind of the same, but these are townhouse style. So it's a little bit different, it does come furnished. And these places are mainly for visitors, graduate students, or for our medical partnership students. So it's not really for undergraduate students, so you don't really have to worry about that unless you are looking into going there for grad school. But that is all our housing communities on campus. If you want to go back and look through the video just in case I talked a little bit too fast, take any notes that you need to, you can find that there. Or if you need any other information about this, you can go to UGA University Housing's website and all of this information is on there. If this video was helpful for you, make sure you hit the like button right now and comment down below any other ideas that you guys have for me. And also make sure you follow me on Instagram at I am Stanley Jr. just to stay more in tune and updated with me. I post way more often on there because you know, Instagram. And remember that I love you guys so much. And my name is Sincerely Drew, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye!